Hi, my name is James Clem. Welcome to my practice. I want to talk to you about a, a really important decision that I made several years ago. I've really enjoyed dentistry and particularly going back about 20 years ago in my particular area people wanted metal out of their mouth so I started doing composites and ceramics and believe me I went through a really learning curve in a journey there but it's also been very beneficial for me because I learned how to perfect that process. About five years ago I got into this thinking that I wanted more control over my restorative dentistry. And I had great laboratories and I really have appreciated them. Aren't we grateful to have great technicians? But I started looking into digital dentistry and you know I, I had this paradigm that digital dentistry, the CEREC, kind of was a subpar restoration. Because I'd seen them, I'm sure you have too. They come through your practice, you're looking at them and, and uh, you know it's like our temporaries look better. And so I, I had this thinking that, you know, the CEREC just wasn't for me. And I did several demonstrations through the years and, um, but you know, it's important to keep an open mindset. And what I have found with technology is that technology evolves. And just think about where your computers were 20 years ago or even 10. And uh, how about a laptop 10 years ago? Uh, we were fairly compromised in its ability to handle what it does now. So um, if, you, if we think about technology, I had an open mind. So to make a long story short, I went to a convention, saw several of my colleagues there who I really respect in dentistry, and, and uh, they said they were using CAD CAM dentistry. And I said, well, you know, what, what, what results are you getting with it? And they said, here, let me show you a few pictures. And it just it blew me out of the water. I would, never would have known that it was CAD CAM. Because see, CAD CAM has changed. And um, let, me, let me share with you where it is in my practice now. You know, good restorative fundamental dentistry happens on how we handle the clinical theater. Number one is when we know what our patient's objectives are and we, we give them a treatment plan based on that, then it's our job to make sure that we're managing the mouth appropriately. And so if you understand occlusion and understand that particular patient's fingerprint of occlusion, and when we start doing dentistry, particularly in the posterior region, it's how we prep the case, it's how we manage the occlusion, and it's how we manage the soft tissue that makes restored dentistry really fly. Whether you're using a lab or whether you're using an in-office CAD CAM system, it's important to manage your clinical theater. And so I've heard the question, well, CAD CAM restorations have more post-op sensitivity. Well, you know, it's a ceramic and most post-op sensitivity is a result of how you handle the adhesive system and how we manage the occlusion. Those are the two main things I look at. So by systemizing our clinical applications as we, as we place these restorations and how we manage them after they're placed, that's what dictates a successful outcome. And I just happen to use the CEREC system to do that. And uh, you know, where I've grown in using this is I would, I would put my CEREC system up against a good laboratory restoration now because I'm getting the same result. In fact, a lot of laboratories are using the CAD CAM system to create their restorations. Have you heard? You know, one of the things with all ceramic dentistry has been the, the fear of the ceramic not performing, particularly if you're working in the posterior area of the mouth. And uh, a lot has happened there. One thing you'll find is CAD CAM restorations will outperform pressable or stack ceramics. Now we have the lithium disilicate ceramic, which is an Emax by Ivoclair, and that is the latest buzz with laboratories. I know a number of credible laboratories that are taking their zirconium based crowns and now making them Emax. Emax has the best shear stress resistance to fracture of any ceramic uh, out that we're using today. And uh, so the performance of that is awesome and it also has the same wear patterns as enamel. So that's where dentistry is going to be going. It's already going there. And they project, I've heard several projections that over the next um, 
seven years, probably over 90% of our laboratory restorations will be made via CAD CAM. So the, the evolution of this optical technology, the virtual technology, and the milling technology is just exploding. And you'll find that that's happening with the CEREC Serona system. So if, if you have a historical paradigm of CEREC, a word it's not good. Of course, it's only as good as the operator. The limitations are no longer in the, in the machine. The limitations is the operator. So uh, I want to take you back to my clinical theater and show you a few features of my CAD CAM uh, CEREC unit and why I think this would be a great benefit for someone who's looking for a little more control in their practice. And I didn't get it for the financial aspect. In fact, it's fairly expensive. And anytime you're putting in a system that's over uh, 100 grand, you kind of think twice. I'll tell you, of all the things that I've purchased to upgrade my, my equipment and my technology, the CEREC bar none has paid for itself. And uh, it paid for itself in my practice probably about 16 months. Um, you'll actually see your overhead go down. For instance, now uh, my, my, my overhead after one year in my practice went down 10%. And that was using the CEREC system and that's include the expense of using the CEREC system and, and the lease that I had. So um, if you're using it in a productive way, it, it can work very well for you. The CAD ceramics have better inherent functional properties because they don't have manufactured defects that you would see with a pressable or stacked ceramic. Most industry doesn't know that. And now with the lithium disilicate ceramics, we have, we have the full gamut of applications to be very functional in the mouth and not have to worry about fractures, which we don't want. In addition to that, you can do gold. I do gold crowns occasionally on second molars where I, I don't have the room for a ceramic that I'd want. And uh, I will mill out a plastic block, fit it in the mouth, make sure it, it's just what I want. Then I'll send it to the lab, they'll cast it. So I have arrangement with the laboratory real close to my practice. And they'll cast it and I can put it in the mouth the next day. So uh, can you do bridges? Well, uh, we don't have the material in the office to do a chair side. However, you have the ability to take your optical impression, send that to a lab, they download it, create a, they'll create a die, and they'll also create a bridge for you. And you can get that back in a very short period of time from your laboratory. And so that's where uh, dentistry is going. It's going in an optical direction. And uh, probably most of us in a few years will uh, be very used to taking optical interoral impressions. So the goop is on its way out. The optical impression is on its way in.